Hey, we're Mohana. Well, it's my seventh feeding this week. I'm in my seventh week of operating my worm ohana bin that I started with a quarter of a pound along with a lot of you at a workshop. And um, things are really happening. Now, the first month is really kind of boring and it's a little scary because you don't, you don't see any what's going on. You've got a small group of worms in there. You're feeding, you don't really see them eating it right away. It's getting moldy and maybe you have fruit flies come around and armies of ants and maybe you've been hit by the black soldier fly larvae and you're kind of worried because you don't think anything much is going on or whatever's going on isn't good. But I guarantee you, things are happening, but it's kind of at the molecular level, at the cellular level, at the bacterial level. There's a lot of change happening in your bin, but you don't see it yet. The main thing that's happening is that the worms are responding to the fact that there's more food in there than they can handle. And maybe you've had some first responders come in to help you out with that food excess. And that's okay because the worms are still sensing there's more food than they need and that stimulates reproduction. So here on the seventh, eighth, somewhere between six and eight weeks of operation, you're gonna see a lot of babies. So I'm real excited. I'm gonna reach into my bin. I'm gonna grab a bunch of bedding and let's see if I've had that reproduction boom start. So I'm gonna reach into my bin. Okay, so I'm just gonna dig into my bin. This is where I was feeding last week and there's still a little goopy stuff left. And I'm just gonna grab a bunch of goopy stuff and turn it over and look what I have. You see all those wads of babies? You see all those teeny tiny little squirmy wormies? We are booming. Well, look at that. I'm gonna grab another, just out of the blue, just gonna grab a handful. Take a look, everybody. Do I have reproduction or what? Look at all those babies. Okay, things are happening. Oh, there's a little wad of guys. I've got babies, I've got juveniles. So they have been paying attention to what I've been doing all this time. Feeding weekly, lots of food, watering daily, keeping them moist and wet and covering with paper, making them real comfortable, and then they do their thing. So how about that? See those big wads of babies? It really just makes me feel really happy when I start seeing them because I know everything is working and the worm colony is becoming established. So you may wonder where do those worm babies come from? How exactly does worm reproduction work? And uh, it's real interesting. So today we're going to talk about worm reproduction. So you got to have a sex chart, right? So I got one for you here and we're going to walk it through it step by step. All right, first thing you need to know, all worms are hermaphroditic or hermaphrodites. They have the reproductive apparatus to create both eggs and sperm. So every worm is producing eggs. That's why you get a lot of reproduction really fast. So when we looked at our different species of worms, you saw that uh, structure called the clitellum. It looked different in Icenia, it looked different in Perionics but that is the structure that creates the egg capsule. All worms have them. And somewhere between the clitellum and the tip of the head is the ovary with a little sac that holds the eggs and a seminal receptacle where the uh, sperm are held. So the ovary produces eggs, they're right there. The testes produces sperm and they come down to a little sac right there. So when worms are ready to reproduce, they will find a friend and stick themselves together. They're kind of stuck together with glue. You'll know it when you see it. And what they're doing is they're exchanging sperm. So the sperm from one worm will go, will travel through a little channel to the seminal receptacle of the other and vice versa. They cannot fertilize themselves. They do need to have another worm to exchange sperm. So that's basically the reproductive process here. They exchange sperm. So that done, this clitellum will now spring into action. It is a glandular organ and it creates a very sticky mucus, kind of like a jelly ring. And that jelly ring will start to move down towards the head of the worm, pick up the eggs and sperm as it travels, and the worm actually backs out of it. It pops off the head of the worm closes up and hardens. That's the egg case 
or the egg capsule. Inside there, in this out external structure, is where fertilization takes place. So eggs and sperm in there, fertilization takes place outside the worm, inside the egg capsule. And depending on conditions and species of worms and a bunch of other things, weeks or even months later, baby worms come hatching out. And there can be anywhere from one to say 12 tiny, tiny baby worms within the egg capsule. And they start looking for food and start eating and they just keep going. So this process is uh, the same in all species of worms. And you can look for the egg cases in your bin. That egg capsule is really specific for Icenia. It looks like a little tiny bead, a little lemon-shaped amber bead. And the one for Perionix is more like a little flattened packet and it's much smaller. So if you look on the, your paper cover, you can often find the uh, egg cases of both species there, but they do lay eggs throughout the worm bin and they especially like to lay their eggs in the stems of banana. You know, you know how you have that kind of fibrous? I think they, they, they like that fiber because they can kind of back off and it, it holds the, the little egg capsule as it slides off the worm. Anyway, I found as many as 30 Icenia egg capsules in one banana stem. I thought that was pretty cool. Anyhow, this is the process. All worms hermaphroditic, they exchange sperm, the clitellum uh, forms the egg case, pops off the head of the worm, and out come the baby wormies. So I hope you're getting lots of baby wormies in your bin. I know I am in mine, and this is the fun part for me. I really love to see this process in action. And remember, worms are stimulated to reproduce by an overabundance of food. They need to feel confident in whatever way worms feel confident, some kind of chemical uh, signal that there's more food than they need, and then they start going to town. So feed your wormies, everybody. Feed your wormies generously. You will be richly rewarded. And don't forget to log your data and report so we can watch that number pop. We can divert waste, we can raise worms, we can do this. And the worms do that.